So, we all have our franchises out there in film. Uh, there's so many to count. And today, I'm going to rank my top five films. Well, my top five movie franchises of all time. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, uh, like I said, I'm going to be ranking my top five movie franchises, in my opinion, of all time. Uh, before we start, um, this Saturday, uh, doing the chase, uh, I've already announced one member of each team. Uh, so for Team Onzo, so far we have uh, Danny Gray from Comic Chat, and on Team LDG, uh, we have uh, Philip Gaiman. Um, the links will be down in the description uh, of the Chase stream, which is already set up for you guys, so you can go and uh, see it, leave a like on it and all that. And also for this video, make sure you uh, please subscribe for future content. But without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, my number five top franchise of all time, I have gone with Rocky. Um, Rocky is a very stable franchise for me. Uh, there's no real down point besides from Rocky Five. I feel like that's a bit lacklustre for me personally. Um, that's why I like Southpaw so much. Um, I feel like it just did what Rocky Five should have done correctly, in my opinion. Uh, but just throughout all the Rocky films, you have uh, just Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion, training to become a better boxer in every film, and it it does happen, obviously. Uh, he beats people like the iconic Apollo Creed, uh, Clubber Lang, Ivan Drago, even beats up Tommy Morrison in the street. Uh, obviously, the peak of the Rocky franchise is in Rocky IV, um, when he fights Ivan Drago and Apollo Creed dies in like the first half an hour. <laughs> uh, but Rocky is number five, I don't feel like it could come above any of these other franchises. So, um, Let's move on to number four. Coming in at number four, I have got Indiana Jones. Now, I've put them here uh, instead of number three because number three is just a personal favourite of mine. And um, just, I don't know, I feel like Indiana Jones is a bit more of a bumpy road than the uh, next franchise. Uh, but. Indiana Jones is still one of the most iconic characters out there. Um, there's going to be an Indiana Jones game made by Bethesda. I hope that's an Xbox exclusive so we can do that to PlayStation. Um, but, um, just, I feel like, yet again, I'm going to name the peak of the franchise, and that is Raiders of the Lost Ark for me. Probably the best adventure film of all time. Just, the road of Indiana, Indiana Jones will be so iconic, and... Um, I'm going to be honest, I feel like Indiana Jones is one of those films that could be left behind uh, in the past soon and um, on Sunday I'm going to do a video of the top 5 films I think will be left behind in the past but um, I feel like Indiana Jones, the franchise itself could be one of those that could be left in the past but um, without confidence Indiana Jones is a really good franchise if you're starting out with films uh, just if you watch the Jones, Jones, you'll kind of get a grasp of, like, pretty much what film should be. Um, obviously, there was this thing, Big Bang Theory for Raiders of the Lost Ark, where basically Indiana Jones wasn't important to the plot. If you removed him, everything would have been the same. Yeah, that kind of shook me a little bit. <laughs> uh, but with that being said, Rocky 5, Indiana Jones 4. What do you think it's going to be at number 3? Let's find out now. Coming in at number three, we have got Back to the Future. Um, this is one of my mate's personal favourites. Uh, this is one of my personal favourites as well. Um, it's just a very strong franchise. I don't feel like Back to the Future Part 2 is as bad as people think it is. Uh, yeah, it's a bit repetitive and shit, but I don't really care. I enjoyed the, uh, the second one. Back to the Future 1 is a real shit. Uh, for me, that's one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, if you want to see me go for a ranking up of the top 10 films of all time, leave a like. Uh, get to 5 likes, I'll do it. Uh, but, yeah. Um, 
Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown, Michael J. Fox as Maya McFly, the iconic duo, and also Einstein the dog. Um, back to the Future 1, the plot seems a bit silly and stupid, just going back to the past in a blooming DeLorean. But um, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, we got to see, got to see Marty absolutely fuck up how the parents met and make Marty the one that his mum fancies. Uh, bit of incest. But uh, I feel like the story throughout kind of just cancels that out. Uh, the chase scene with Marty and Biff, uh, the uh, skateboard scene. Um, and the thing is, with the skateboards, uh, Marty didn't realise that the skateboards weren't invented until the 1960s, and he went back to 1955, so he kind of invented the skateboard and Calvin Klein, because his mum kept calling him Calvin Klein because of his underwear. Um, Back to the Future 1, definitely the strongest one. Back to the Future 2 is a bit below it, but I don't see it as a bad film as some people do. Uh, Back to the Future Part 3, I really enjoyed. It's definitely a different twist. Uh, instead of going to the future like we did in Part 2, we went way back to the past, uh, to 1885. Sorry. Um, obviously, the Back to the Future thing is a bit weird because... We never really got to the future aside from part two, but who cares? Um, part three, we go back to 1885. Doc has actually found a love interest, a fair name's Kira. Um, Doc wants to stay back in 1885 because he wants to spend the rest of his life with her, but he knows he can't because of the stuff that he knows and stuff, and just to put a fly, fly, put a fly effect in it. Um, James Biff Buchanan, I think his name is. Uh, definitely a, the main antagonist of the film. Um, the shootout scene with uh, Marty and Buchanan. Uh, obviously, a lot of this film resembles the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, we saw a bit of the good, the bad, and the ugly in Back to the Future Part 2 when Biff is having his uh, little hot tub party. Um, but besides the point from that, uh, I feel like Back to the Future is a very strong franchise. Um, I feel like the all these franchises that we're naming should be immortalised in film history. Some of them are, some of them aren't, which I don't know why. Um, but a really strong Back to the Future will become a kid's favourite in the next generation. Uh, it's already a favourite for me. Uh, I hope it'll be a favourite for all of you out there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Number three has been passed. Uh, I think you can all guess what number two and one are, but which order? We'll find out. So, coming in at number two. Uh, I'm going to go with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but only just. Um, the storyline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe for the past 23 films since 2008 the last 10 years, well, last 11 years of film, has led to this point where we are right now. Cancel out one vision, we don't really, I'm not really talking about that yet. Uh, we'll talk about that another time. But, from 2008 to 2019, phase one, phase four, all just one story, and uh, it's just a very strong story, in my opinion. Um, from Iron Man to Avengers Endgame, all that is connected. Uh, for the Dark World, who fucking cares? Uh, but everything's connected in one way, and that's what I really love about Marvel. Continuity, everything's connected. Nothing is really out of place in that universe either. Um, it's just a real fun time. Yeah, it's like 48 hours of film. Well, around 48 hours or like maybe three days I'm not too sure how many hours it is I know someone did research on it um, if I do find it I'll put it in the link below how many hours the Marvel Cinematic Universe is to complete from start to finish but all I know is that it's a very fucking long time <laughs> yeah but that being said the reason I don't consider Marvel to be number one is because of how recent it is yeah it's going to be one of the more popular franchises in this generation but I don't feel like it's going to be one of the more popular of all time. 
Um, and honestly, the number one franchise is just better in my opinion. Yeah, it's been a bit. Uh, it's been more smooth sailing for Marvel um, in the film category. I mean, they just keep selling billions, billion dollar films every year. Um, I don't feel like Marvel will stop doing billion dollar films. I feel like pretty much every film from now will be a billion dollar film. It's just how they are. But the reason they're not number one is because I only see them as great and as iconic in the films. The games, the comics, they still need to sort themselves out. Unlike number one. Do you want to find out who that is? Here's your fucking clue. Let's do it. Coming in at the number one spot, I have got Star Wars. And uh, I've got that because uh, this was one of the first franchises I watched as a kid. Um, it's still an iconic franchise. I mean, pretty much my whole room has Marvel and Star Wars shit in it. Like, my phone call pops up there. I have this here. I have shit stuff, other stuff in my other room. Um, Star Wars has definitely helped me through tough, tough times. Um, I remember when I was 8 years old and I was sick off school, um, this was like 2012, I know it might sound old but it was 2012, uh, my mum got the VHS uh, and she gave me some films, it was The Goonies, Indiana Jones and A New Hope. I watched Indiana Jones first because I was already uh, accustomed to that franchise at that point. And then I watched Star Wars New Hope and just my perspective of film just changed like it looked like the film took place in like modern day but it was 1977. I was just shocked at the things that ILM and Lucasfilm did at that point and when I looked at all the other films because at this point it was the originals and the uh, prequels just looking at them and just like in awe of what they did. Especially the original trilogy. I mean, nowadays with prequel trilogy, expected to be at that level or that calibre. But the original trilogy in the 70s, that was unheard of. Yet some of the technology was used in Jaws. And maybe if the technology weren't used in Jaws, it wouldn't be used in Star Wars. But I feel like that, te that technology would have really been used or advanced as it was. A modern film wouldn't be as it is if it weren't for the franchises like Rocky or Star Wars. Just the technology they used in the films, just episode 4, 5 and 6, is pretty much just a tech show. The behind the scenes of it is amazing. Um, I searched up the A New Hope uh, profit and it was 880 million I think. But in modern day that would have been 3 billion. So it would have smashed everything that we have so far out of the park by 300 million. That is insane. You've got to realise this. This company came out of nowhere. I think the only thing significant that George Lucas did before that was American Graffiti. And that's where he found Harrison Ford or Han Solo. And Indiana Jones. And just... This film will always be in my heart as the best film franchise of all time. Um, obviously there is the speculation that Disney, it's not speculation, it's fact that Disney has not handled Star Wars well and it's kind of gone on a decline. But we have a Mandalorian that has uh, shot up to the moon. Especially with season 2, uh, the emotional factor of season 2. I've explained this in the Mandalorian episodes. I'll leave a link right up there. Correct me if I'm wrong, but about up there. Um, but yeah, Star Wars is, for me, by far the best franchise out there. And if you really want to get into film and just study the technology of Star Wars, just the perspective of it will be amazing if you look at Star Wars just from the special effects it's amazing people always look at it through the dialogue and I understand that that's how basic people do it but if you're more advanced you can look at it through the cinematography or the special effects or just the action sequences the choreography just 
next time you watch Star Wars, watch it from a different perspective other than the dialogue, and you'll see why it is the second highest profiting film franchise or franchise of all time. Yeah, that's my number one. So guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, this franchise ride Frankie was really hard to do. There's so many great franchises out there. Um, obviously, it's my opinion, so if you want to put yours down below, I will reply to them. And uh, yeah, every comment that you do put down there, I will reply, reply to. Just don't be too harsh down there. Uh, before I go, obviously, make sure to subscribe. Go check out my Twitter down below to it so you can see who is going to be team member, the last team member of Team Onzo, 5 p.m. GMT tonight, uh, 12 p.m. EST, well, yeah, 12 p.m. EST, 11 a.m. Uh, CST. Uh, with that being said, uh, I wish you all a pleasant evening. Uh, I'm probably going to go and drink some uh, cola and play UFC. And yeah, um, hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. Take care. Uh, peace.